Fox News alert a new strategy for Afghanistan. President Trump announcing his plan for America's longest war, vowing the U.S. will defeat the terrorists. But the commander in chief insisting his approach is not nation building and not, quote, a blank check. This is Outnumbered. I'm Sandra Smith. Here today, Harris Faulkner, anchor of the intelligence report on Fox Business, Trish Regan, Democratic strategist and Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlov is here. And today's hashtag one lucky guy, former Green Beret and veteran of three tours of duty in Afghanistan, Ben Collins. He is outnumbered and more than qualified to speak <laughs> on, this, on this matter today. Thank you. Well, it's yeah. great to have you on the couch. It's fantastic to, to get your experience, your perspective. And I know you've even been talking to the president about this. So this will be great stuff. It, it, it should be, yes. And, and I can say I'm glad that we're finally talking about Afghanistan again after 15 years, 16 years. All right. We'll do a lot more of that in just a moment. Let's get started. President Trump laying out his plan for Afghanistan in a primetime address to the nation. After consulting with his generals, the president saying he will give America's troops the tools they need to win, but declining to disclose how many more troops will be dis dispatched to wage a conflict nearing the 16-year mark and refusing to set timelines, calling such an approach counterproductive. Watch. Conditions on the ground, not arbitrary timetables, will guide our strategy from now on. America's enemies must never know our plans or believe they can wait us out I will not say when we are going to attack, but attack we will. The president's new Afghan strategy winning praise from most quarters of his party, including Senator Lindsey Graham. I'm proud. I'm relieved. I'm proud of the fact that President Trump made a national security decision, not a political decision. I'm proud of the fact that he listened to the generals and most proud of the fact that he shows the will to stand up to radical Islam. I'm relieved that he did not take the advice to withdraw, which would have been disastrous. A lot of praise there from the senator, but Democrats panning the president's plan, including House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi saying this, quote, the president's announcements announcement is low on details, but raises serious questions when President Trump says there will be no ceiling on the number of troops and no timeline for withdrawal. He is declaring an open ended commitment of American lives with no accountability to the American people. Jennifer Griffin joins us live from the Pentagon with more. Jennifer. Sandra, let's talk about what this strategy is not. It is not completely new. Many ele elements of it have been tried before, but it is not a withdrawal and it is not a surge in U.S. troops. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis was in Iraq today, but would not address troop numbers. I would prefer not to go into those numbers right now, but I have to look. I've directed the chairman to put the plan together now. We've obviously been discussing this option for some time. When he brings that to me, I'll determine how many more we need to send in. It's been widely reported that the president has authorized up to 3,900 more troops. The president had a clear message for Afghanistan as well as its neighbors. We will not dictate to the Afghan people how to live or how to govern their own complex society. We are not nation building again. We are killing terrorists. Literally for now nearly 16 years we've been at war in Afghanistan and and the strategy has continuously changed. In, in many ways we haven't had one strategy for all those years. We've had 16 different years, 16 different strategies. Military officials have long said there is no military solution to Afghanistan, and yet successive presidents rely on the military to fix Afghanistan. This strategy will rely on diplomacy, but right now the State Department is underfunded and many positions remain unfilled. Secretary Tillerson eliminated the office of the special representative to Pakistan and Afghanistan, which was established by Hillary Clinton when she was Secretary of State, and there is currently no U.S. ambassador in Kabul. Sandra? All right. Jennifer Griffin, thank you. Let's open it up to the couch. Uh, ben, can you let us know what struck you last night as the president laid out his detailed plan? So I, I think the, the most important thing is that uh, the, the president 
when I heard his words, I realized that not only did he listen to the generals, uh, but he listened to the soldiers as well. And he brought in a number of soldiers who served there over the years past. Like myself, I was lucky enough to have lunch with him a couple of weeks ago to discuss Afghanistan specifically. And he, he listened to what we said in terms of here are the reasons why we have not been successful. There was really no clear and concise uh, understanding of what soldiers were trying to accomplish. The diplomatic and the military wasn't really working well together. They weren't working hand in hand. And, and as Vice President Pence just uh, said there, there were so many different strategies over the years. And, and so he listened to his generals, but he also listened to the guys that, were, that, that have fought that fight on the, on the ground. And that gives me a lot of, uh, of hope because, as everybody knows, that this is a president who campaigned and, and said that he didn't really want to be there in the first place. So he, he's taking, in his mind, you know, I think a, a big chance by by uh, allowing us to, to continue the fight. And Ben, I do want to point out that we're looking at a live picture of Joint Base Andrews, where the president is wheels up from the White House, uh, going to be arriving there in just moments. Obviously, all this happening before that campaign style rally he's expected to hold tonight in Phoenix. But to go back to your point about how he's listening to the generals, he's listening to guys like you sitting down, having lunch, taking in uh, your experience. Here was what the president said on his original instinct when it came to Afghanistan. My original instinct was to pull out. And historically, I like following my instincts. But all my life, I've heard that decisions are much different when you sit behind the desk in the Oval Office. So I studied Afghanistan in great detail and from every conceivable angle. A very honest moment for the president there, Jessica. Yeah, no, I, I thought it was one of the finest moments actually of the speech because of the honesty to it. And I think that it's something very important that I know we've all discussed how, how critical it is that we allow politicians to evolve on issues because attitudes do change. There's a time and a place for a certain perspective. This is something that happens on the left and the right, and certainly on social issues uh, specifically. I take your point, Ben, and it's really interesting to hear about that, that you've had that interaction with him. I think that the magnitude of the moment with him looking out there at people in their uniforms really hits home and we've talked about how the most persuasive people to him are these generals. I think as well that anyone who was in favor of Barack Obama's policies in Afghanistan couldn't really fault the president for what came out of his mouth last night. This is in very many ways a continuation of what we've seen over the last uh, 16 years. The question will be though what does winning actually look like? He said that he was going to be clear but he wasn't clear and specific on that and I'm not saying that I need the troop levels right now. I know that there's been 3,900 that have been authorized since June, but there are many who are saying that you're going to need a lot more than that to actually win this war. I would have liked a more precise vision of what that looks like. So I, I would just want to step in with what I heard the president say and see if it jives with what he told you to, Ben. What he's saying is not win the war in the traditional sense that we think of one side losing, one side winning. The time for that has really passed. It mm -hmm. passed a decade ago from Certainly. what generals have told me. So the point now is to try to stomp out the terrorists in that country. I have two questions for you. One, how much of a presence now has ISIS been allowed to gain under the last president? I mean, they were a blip on the screen in Afghanistan. Now we're, we're willing to extend a war to go get mm -hmm. them. And the Taliban's role in all of this. They now have a third of their country back. C correct. And, and so I, my response to your question and to yours as well, Jessica, is, is that the difference has to be, you know, in, like you said, defining the win. And what he said last night is we are not going to nation build. We're going to focus on creating a stable environment. So what does that mean? Look, the reality is Afghanistan is essentially Kabul, the capital, and then a number of provinces. And Afghanistan is such a localized environment mm -hmm. that we don't have to hold that territory and make everything safe. He said we are going to he actually gave a door, you know, an opening for the Taliban to come to the peace table. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. question around numbers is a lot less, uh, I think, applicable. 3,000, 4,000, 50,000, it, it doesn't, that doesn't really matter, except how are they going to be utilized? And the strongest we were in Afghanistan was right after 9-11, when special forces teams went in and we had, you know, CAS, we had medical evacuation and mm -hmm. we had, you know, close air support. And, and we put a hurting on the Taliban so quickly that they were pushed into Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, a president well, called, out called out Pakistan. Well. Exactly. Yeah. That's, 
different. He talked about India. He recognizes that this is a regional problem and it's going to have to have a regional solution. Um, but look, the reality is I think if we can punch the Taliban as hard as we possibly can for the next six to eight months, they will have to come to the negotiating so table. So you think using the language of George W. Bush, who also didn't put timelines and troop numbers on this, and granted it was the beginning of the conflict, you think that is the right approach to dealing with it now? I want to jump in and show Marine One. You're looking at a live picture right now. The president uh, just uh, took off from the White House. He is expected to land in moments at Joint Base Andrews. After laying out his strategy on Afghanistan last night, he's got a campaign-style rally event planned in Phoenix this, uh, this evening. Trish, I want to go to this sound because there is criticism and disagreement within the president's own party uh, on this Afghanistan plan. Uh, Rand Paul notably called it a terrible idea after the president rolled out his plan last night. Well, here's Senator Lindsey Graham slamming Rand Paul for his criticism of the president. Watch this. I trust General Mattis, Dunford, and Kelly more than I trust General Paul. I think he's actually a worse general than General Obama, believe it or not. You know, general General Paul's been wrong about everything in this war. It's that kind of thinking that got us into 9-11. You may be tired of fighting the terrorists. They're not tired of fighting you. So take that. <laughs> and General Paul, right? Um, well, look, Rand Paul has uh, a very libertarian approach to this. That's uh, always been his mantra. Um, but this is a, an approach that's been echoed through various strains of the conservative party. And we've seen this as kind of a populist movement. You know, we shouldn't be over there fighting every single war. Well, I'll tell you what, we got out of Iraq too quickly. And by getting out of Iraq as quickly as we did, what did we do? We left a breeding ground for terrorism and a breeding ground for ISIS. So once you make a commitment to be somewhere, it's very hard to say we're going to walk away. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, we are not prepared to walk again, uh, away from Afghanistan. If we were to do so, you run the risk of basic, I, I worry, seeing some kind of 9-11 type event again. Do not forget why we went to Afghanistan in the first place. And I know people don't want to be there. And it's incredibly challenging and, and hard, I think, when you're in his position because you don't want to lose one single American life mm. over there in Afghanistan, but you right. also make sh you need to make sure you find these bad guys so we don't lose them. Back so I, I want to talk a little bit again about that void that Trish is now talking about. So that's the second mention here on the couch because it's important to talk about what has been able to fester. I think ISIS probably thought, based on the former president's timeline, they'd have a ground to step up on. They were counting on us leaving, even more in, in bigger numbers than we already have, based on what Obama was putting in motion. They're going to be sadly awakened by the fact that we're not just staying, but we're coming for them. So we're expecting to see the president in just moments. Marine One has landed at Joint, Joint Base Andrews. The president is expected uh, to then board Air Force One on his way to Phoenix for that rally. Uh, he is expected to make one stop. His first stop is going to be the border city of Yuma, where he's scheduled a tour, tour Customs and Border Patrol equipment, and then he'll head to the Phoenix Convention Center, by the way, despite the mayor's request for him to delay that campaign-style rally. So watching for the president to walk off of Marine One. Your thoughts, Ben, um, less than 24 hours after he laid out this strategy um, and what he faces today. So I, I think that the, the image that a lot uh, of individuals and advisors tried to, to give him was, you know, the, the reality is, Right now, Afghanistan's political situation is almost more dangerous than the Taliban in, in terms of the stability of the centralized government. Mm -hmm. And and so if, if it has started to look a lot like what brought the Taliban to the fore, which was civil war in the 80s. And I think that if we just precipitously pulled out, and like Trish said, it would look a lot like ISIS's takeover of Iraq, it wouldn't just be the Taliban that would be taking over Afghanistan, it would be the Haqqani network. And, and I know that's in the weeds, but just think Al Qaeda. It would essentially be Al Qaeda, and you're surrounded by countries with nuclear weapons, and there is nothing, wow. that, nothing good that could come out of that. Uh, trust me, I don't want to see any more American lives uh, lost in Afghanistan either, but it is within our national security. We just have to get it right this time. All right, and, and you know, Sandra, we're watching this this picture right now because the president's going to get off Marine One and then he's going to jump onto Air Force One, and this day is going to begin uh, differently than many people across the country had said that they wanted it to. That some people had said they didn't want the president to go to Arizona and have a campaign-style rally. Not all of them were Democrats. Not all of them were his critics. There was concern even within the Republican Party uh, about whether or not this would be good so close to the heels of Charlottesville. But given the speech that, that happened last night and such a different tone that we saw from the president. And there's the president now. Um, 
obviously there's a lot of questions about what he will address in this speech tonight, how he will address it, what he will begin with, uh, and what will be the main focus, going back to the point that the mayor there said it was too soon uh, to hold this type of event. Jessica? Yeah, no, I thought that was really interesting. And the mayor of Phoenix came out days ago to say this. This wasn't something that he, you know, decider took a few days. He, he knew right away instinctually that a campaign style rally looking back at how those rallies have gone in the past would be wrong for the city right then. We know that the 